Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. That's from I'm chuckling because I just had a little mishap that was very silly. Not on camera though. Um, welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode number 751. And the topic today is actually a follow-up to yesterday's talk. So the topic today is um, equality in relationships. And I said, let, there's, there's more to talk about and let's go deeper. And yesterday I talked about this, but I'll, I'll recap that briefly and then we'll get into today's. Before I get into the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am or what I'm about, and then maybe you'll go, oh, good. <laughs> Perhaps. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. I am um, an inspirational speaker, at least I like to think so, and a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, and also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. Um, that's what drives my work, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. It's also what fed these talks called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. And this, as I say, is episode 751. So I've done a bunch of these. I just started over two years ago. So today, the topic is on the same themes yesterday about equality in relationships. And I was talking about this from the point of view of equal regard, equal respect, and equal um, balance in relationships. And also about the idea of not being a codependent paradigm, as in owning your own space and taking yourself, taking care of yourself, so in partnership, you're contributing from overflow than rather than pulling from lack, which is all about codependence, and I talked about it yesterday. So today, um, today we're going to go a little bit deeper because I want to play with some other pieces that I didn't recover before. So first of all, this is a, um, well, let me say it this way. I don't want to spring a surprise on you. However, what I'm talking about here is going to be equally important in relationship out there and in relationship in here. So I'm, pre I'm preempting what I was going to surprise you with by telling you what I'm going to do. So the things I'm going to talk about today are relationship contributors that will help create equality in relationship and ideally find balance between the partners. And this is, this is relevant if you're gay or straight. So it's not about men and women necessarily. We'll see if I get to that. But it's true whatever sort of relationship you're in. It's even true in other non-romantic relationships too, too as well. So... Hi, Mary. Uh, or pulling from core, not overflow. Well, mm, I like to think it's overflow because it means you're already full. Whereas if you're pulling from the core, it could be taken away from yourself. It could be, sorry, it could be assumed that you're taken away from yourself. So personally, I'm, I'm labeling it as the overflow of being already filled up. And I'll get to that in a moment. So yes, and yes, sort of, kind of. And by the way, if you're wondering who I'm talking to, if you're watching this, you're not watching me live on Facebook, apparently. So this is a Facebook live I do every day at 5 p.m. Actually, I'll get into that later on. But basically, Wherever you're watching this, if it's not live interactive now, I'll tell you where you can find me live in the moment when I get to that point. So that's at the back end, so stay tuned. Okay, so yeah, exactly. Thank you, Mary, exactly, I agree with you. So this is, this is a, um, let's look for this. This is a balancing of partnership in a sense. So it's not just romantic relationships, it's other relationships too. So I talked about the idea of giving from overflow versus get, pulling from your lack, which is the energetic. Ah, oh, pulling from, okay, I think I get what you mean. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm rereading what you said, now it's clicking differently, so thank you, Mary. In the context of relationships, it's not just about, <laughs> thank you, Mary. I really have your attention on this important, terrific topic. Well, great, I hope other people are getting this too, because this, this is a game changer. For some, this is, for some people, a game changer, because frankly, there are so many people in relationships that are dysfunctional, that are codependent, that are one-sided, and that are not healthy. That's four things to start with. So let me give you some more pieces to go with this. So again, as I mentioned yesterday, in case you didn't get to watch yesterday's broadcast, I talked about how in a relationship, one of the key elements is to learn how to love yourself, feel, feel yourself up first, so when you're in a relationship, you're not coming from lack or not pulling from lack. You're actually coming from fullness. And a healthy relationship, which I talked about rather being codependent is interdependent, is that you don't need the other person for that relationship. You want them for a relationship. Different energetics. When you need somebody, it's from a place of desperation. A place where you don't feel you have what you want, so you're taking from the other person. That's not healthy. Having said that, some people feel they, they're more loved when they have that need from the other person. That's an old wives' tale. Well, no, let me say that differently, because that's, that's also sexist. <laughs> that's an old paradigm is not true anymore. Because frankly, this need to fill a space, which I talked about yesterday. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to explain yesterday's broadcast. Go watch that. I'll put the link in the comments. You can go watch the replay from yesterday because it makes a lot more sense and I can go in much more detail. 
let's come to today. So what I want to talk about today, <laughs> finally, is the understanding that there are things we can contribute to a relationship that also work inwardly as well as outwardly. So I've already preempted that and told you about that. So here's some things. Not only is this about love, and it's also about support, about safety, about trust, about care, all these different things. Um, so no, no one, sorry, we're saying, but no one truly wants a needy person. Actually, I'll disagree with you. I know people who want someone who needs them because they'll feel like they're valid. Okay, let me talk about that for a second. You just gave me a good, like, oh, good piece to talk about. Some people, and I was one of them, so I know what it feels like, have this yearning to feel wanted. So when somebody I was in a relationship with needed me, I felt valid, I felt valued, I felt alive, I felt fulfilled. Totally mis dysfunctional, but I was in that place. And I'm sure some people watching this, maybe not you, Mary, other people may be watching this may go, oh, I know that one. So it's, it's interesting because needy has two, there's two places for me. Okay, so let, me, let me say this, I'm trying to ex extrapolate this. One thing is when somebody makes you feel wanted or needed, then you feel like you're valid, you have a reason to be. I understand not yes I understand Mary not a word not an already healthy whole person so let me get to that point because there's there's a couple of dysfunctions in here one of them which is when you're in a relationship with somebody and you feel wanted and needed by them it gives you a sense of validity a sense of presence a sense of belonging which is great to a certain degree but it's also the codependent model which I talked about yesterday so I'm not going to recap that you have to watch yesterday's broadcast and I'll put the link in the comments but when you are autonomous and whole that need isn't there anymore. The thing I think you're talking about is needy is when you have somebody who is almost parasitic. Is that right, parasitic, parasitical? Someone's a parasite, energetically, and I'm, be, I'm being blunt with that. There's a, there's a term that I've used a lot in the past times, it's called, basically called an energy vampire. And you know what people are like who are like that because they're always like looking to pull something from you, they're taking from you. I know some people around me who are like that and I tend to avoid them because I can't educate them because they're not able to, they're not taking the education, but they seem to want to feed on my energy. And as much as I know they can't take my energy, it's not very comfortable. So that sort of neediness, I definitely understand as being a negative, incomplete, and dysfunctional way to be. So there are those people out there too. So there's a need, like wanting to feel needed and feel wanted is one thing, but when somebody is hungry and taking from you, that's really, yeah, what someone drains another, exactly, Mary. When someone is a parasitical, en parasitic energy, is parasitic or parasitical? Parasitic, I think, energy, it's not nice to be around that. So let me get back to my main topic because I was attempting to give you some keys to make your relationships even better than they already are. Or if you haven't got one, how to be in one that's healthy. So equality is one thing. Oh, they suck the life out of the connection, not just the joy. <laughs> they suck the joy out of the connection. No, they suck the life out of everything. Enjoyment of everything. So yes, I agree. All right, so let me, let me get back on track. So I talked about equality yesterday in the broadcast. One of the to that is the understanding that part of the qualities of being in a healthy relationship is you are contributing certain things to the relationship. And, this is the thing you want to make sure of, is what you're contributing, you can contribute to yourself at the same time. So some things I want to talk about, and I mentioned them earlier, but I'm going to go into more detail, is um, things like trust. Contributing trust to your partnership is a great thing to have. However, trust is something that you generally earn. And again, outward and inward. So you can earn, you can, you can earn your partner's trust and they can earn yours. And you can learn to earn your own trust. And then when I talk about this one again, I've talked about this before. I talked about it's a, site, it's, it's a direct result of keeping agreements. And I'll mention that piece again in this context, you get it. The idea of trust is that you know that you can count on somebody to do something. One of the best ways to build trust with somebody else is make and keep agreements with them. And the way you do it with yourself is the same thing. You make and keep agreements with yourself. It's not the number of agreements, it's the number of agreements you keep. So it could be three agreements you keep, but if you break seven, that doesn't work. It doesn't matter if you make keep three agreements or 20 agreements, it's keeping all the agreements that counts. So the more agreements you keep, the more trust you build with yourself and with your partner. So this is a, again, as I mentioned, this is a double-edged, not double-edged sword, but it's a two-way street with your partnership and with yourself. And if you're single, you can still, still get value from this because you're doing it for yourself. So self-trust is a key thing you can build and I did a whole talk about this a while ago about keep about keeping agreements with yourself, how powerful that is. So build your trust, trust with yourself. It also means that when you pick relationships, you'll find someone that matches you where you are. So the more trust you build in yourself, 
generally speaking, the more to trust you'll find in partnership because if, they, if you don't trust them, you won't want to be with them. It's kind of black and white. I think it's, well, just checking inside. That's pretty black and white, I believe. I could be wrong. So, because there are people who trust somebody who then betrays them. So I'd like to think, okay, I'm realizing I could revise what I said because I realized I said something that I think might be actually inaccurate. When you truly do trust yourself, you're more discerning, I'll give you that, but you can still be fooled. Let me just let me just say that because there are pieces, instances where I know people trust themselves, but they get fooled by somebody who they think they can trust and then delay, then, then uh, betrays their trust. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, all right, so back on track. So trust for each other is a key thing in the quality of relationships. It's also something you can do for yourself either in relationship or when you're single. Again, keeping agreements is a great way to do, use as a, as a barometer and a guide for that. Second one is self-care. There's a sense of like wanting to take care of your partner and be nice to them and all those different things. Yet sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. So when you take better care of yourself, you can be actually more effective and be more available to take care of your partnerships. So again, in to help out. So inwardly focused. So doing things like healthy things, whether it's the way you eat or the exercise you do, spiritual practices, um, mental stuff where you do, you, you, you do things that help you either one, get better mental practice by doing crosswords or something like that, or playing playing bridge, playing, doing things that act, actually activate your brain centers, and also things that help you decompress when you've done, like you work too hard. All these little things you can do for yourself on a mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual levels, or four, are things you can do for yourself that make you a better partner, and things you can do for your partner to help them be a better place as well. Again, both sides of this someone will talk about, so you get the value of this. Another one I can talk about is self-support. It's so wonderful when you're in a relationship with someone who supports your dreams, your visions, your intentions. It's also important that you learn how to support yourself. And I mean this in the sense that when something happens, you know you have resources inside to forgive yourself, to trust yourself, to redirect yourself, and to feel that you can take care of yourself. Because the thing is, sometimes your partner may not be available to give you the support you want, and sometimes they may not want to give you the support you want. So having the resource inside to go to that is a vital piece of this too. And self-support is really an inclusive umbrella for a lot of things, including um, self-trust, self-care, self-love. There's a few others in there, I'll get to those in a moment. So I'm, I've got a whole list. I don't wanna cover them all here, but I'll give you some, t some pointers to give you directions where you can go in your love life, in your relationships, and in your own life personally with yourself. And I do have a couple of things I'm gonna mention at the back end, so I'll tell you about those in a minute. I've warned you ahead of time. So additionally, another piece I would work on is self-confidence. Now I'm saying this one because frankly, it's so like, oh yeah, duh, sort of thing. But the reality is a lot of people don't have real self-confidence because they put it on as bravado. And self-confidence and bravado aren't the same thing. You can say, well, I can fake it till I make it, pretend to be confident, doesn't always work. Self-confidence comes from really well, one of the key elements is self-trust. When you trust yourself, it's easy to be confident because you know who you are, but it's more than that. And being confident is something you can give to your partnership too. So you can, also, again, inspire them by having them trust you. They can feel more confident as well. When you're confident and you, great, and you encourage confidence in your partnership by supporting them, by letting them trust you, by having a resource there, both partners get raised in that vibration of, of confidence. There's a piece in there I was gonna go to, where was it? Yes, confidence, as I mentioned, is a, is, a, is a piece of trusting yourself. Yes, it is, Mary. Self-confidence is an inside job, so indeed. So building trust in yourself. It's also having this place inside where it's okay to make mistakes. Part of confidence is the willingness and the acceptance of failing. And I, I saw a quote today that was something about um, winning is nothing. Failing multiple times is everything as a teaching that failure is part of the journey to success because winning, if you win every time, you're living a very shallow life. When you fail and you learn the lessons to get back up again and keep going, it's a much more fulfilled life and a whole life. So when you do win, you take it with humility and joy and celebration without ego and, um, what's we're looking for? Lack of, lack of humility, I guess. <laughs> so understanding that when you do work with the idea of confidence, it is something that is built from experience and from humility because as weird as it's gonna sound, I believe self-confidence comes from greater humility. Because when you have the humility inside, exactly, also being able to love, you, love yourself in, uh, sometimes too, that's the humility, so thank you for that, yes. 
And so understanding that your self-confidence is birthed out of humility, because the only way self-confidence really works is when it's unshakable. The only way it can be unshakable is if you can't be shaken. And if you have humility, there's nothing to shake. It's almost like the martial artist mode in terms of being able to do like um, I think it's jiu jitsu. The jiu jitsu martial art is actually, is actually designed to avoid physical, um, well, physical, physical battle, but physical action. It's actually meant to be a defense, defense style that requires no touch, if I remember correctly. And the idea being is that you learn that you don't, there's nothing to fight against. If you, if someone, if you go in a fight with somebody and, then, and there's nothing there for you to fight, they just get out of the way, self-defeating. But the truth is the person who gets out of the way is in a place where there's nothing to hold on to as a structure. The challenge with people who think they're confident is based on a bravado or a, um, a self-building up, huff, like, a, um, like a puffed up chest energetic. What's happening is they are in a place where they're built basically a house of cards. One little push can knock them down completely and they feel defeated. And unfortunately, some people who've used that path to confidence have become more depressed and more suicidal because they don't know how to trust themselves. See, it all ties together. The self-trust is a core element and humility with that gives you a sense of confidence that you're willing to try things. The true thing about self-confidence is you have the willingness to try things out and no fear that if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And it's okay. That again is a way to live life more, more fulfilled. It's a much healthier way to be in a relationship. It's a much more powerful way to be with yourself. The thing about this is that when you learn how to have this level of humility and confidence in your own life, you become an incredibly powerful partner an incredible, an incredibly powerful person in your own right. So this is just a taste, by the way. I'm giving you, I'm giving you like four or five different keys. These are fundamental pieces that give you the ability to be a much better partner and a much more better person, which, well, better person first, then a better partner. Let's put it that way around. And that's the real joy of this. To have this ability to do, do this path of self-awareness, self-regulation, self-expression, self-expansion, you become a better choice for a partnership. We'll put that one in there as well. Why not? Let's put the one in there as well. But it starts with you. So the equality I'm talking about, as I mentioned yesterday, and again, I'll put the link in, I'll put the, link in the comments for yesterday's broadcast. I talked the whole thing about the codependent trap and the idea of moving beyond it. This is about some of the pieces you can do for yourself to make yourself a better prospect <laughs> and a better partner. Because if you're single, this will work for you as well as if you're in a relationship. So a couple of things I mentioned I'm going to put in the comments because I talked about these earlier. The self-love piece is a vital part of learning how to be a better partner because when you go into a relationship from that needy place, as I mentioned, that need to get the other person's love is a desperation place. It's not healthy, it's not fulfilling, and you drain the other person. When you learn to love yourself and you feel your own inner, um, your tanks up first, so to speak, your, your, your self-love fuel supply, so to speak, you're a much better partner. So I'm going to put the self-love practice in the comments. It's a, it's a um, audio and, and it's an audio meditations with a guidebook, which I think is I highly recommend. I'm very passionate about this. And also, I'm going to put the link in there for my Coming Home to Yourself course because the new group program I've been talking about less now, but I, I started a while ago, is a group program I'm launching, which is right now 17 different keys that will help you to become a better person in the sense that not that you're not a bad person now, you're a good person now, but they'll give you tools and keys to be more self-sufficient, self-reliant, and self-fulfilled. So again, if you're single, it prepares you for a relationship. If you're in a relationship, it makes you a better partner. So preparation and partnership, both of those work. So those links will be in the comments. Um, that's three things. So the replay, self-love, self, and coming into yourself. Lots of self stuff. Whew. I wasn't planning to do such a long talk, but I hope it's been of help to you. If you haven't seen my talks before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook which is right here, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my replays before, let me tell you where you find my replays. Um, because these are every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, although this week I had a couple of missed times, but it is every day. Replays are on my business page on Facebook, which I invite you to like my page, which is barryselby.author. And also on my YouTube channel, which I invite you to subscribe to, which is Barry Selby. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. This is part two of the talk I did yesterday in a way, so I'll put the link for that in the replays I mentioned, and there's two other things I mentioned I talked about as well. And I do invite your questions, comments, thoughts, etc. If you have anything you want to talk about, you have a desire to reach out and talk to me, you can message me over social media. Um, let me know what you need. I'll support, you can put comments below and I'll respond when I sign off. And I think that's about it. I do appreciate you being with me. This is one of those um, deeper conversations, even for a Saturday. So hence the casual attire, by the way. 
I appreciate you being with me. As always, I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.